Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I'm going to be talking about books. Specifically, like the new books in my collection, ones that I'm reading, some books that I've gone back and I'm rereading now, especially now that we're in quarantine. And I'm going to do a very quick overview of the bookshelves back here. I've been getting a lot of requests recently to review my book collection and give recommendations since people are stuck at home and they want to do some reading. Um, if you're new to my channel, I have been a lifelong book lover. I loved books. I'm a big nerd in school. I loved reading textbooks for fun. Uh, after school, I worked for a couple of years at a university bookstore and now I work in publishing. So books galore right? So I've constantly been reading my whole life and I'm actually going to talk first about how I've been actually a bit struggling with reading recently in light of recent events. Um, but that's how this is going to be structured. We're going to be talking about just a little bit of an update. I'm going to talk about the new books that I've gotten recently, what I've been reading and what I recommend for right now. And then later on, I'll throw a timestamp if you want to skip to it, but I'm not going to do an in-depth like book by book review of these bookshelves. I've already done that and the books back here don't change that much. Like this is kind of my big collection here. If anything, I've decluttered a few books, but I haven't added really anything new here. So if you really want to see like a book by book, like almost an hour long video of me going through every one of these, I'll throw that up in the cards if you didn't, if you weren't around back then or if you missed it. But this isn't going to be that. We're going to be focusing on what I'm reading right now and what newer books I'm coming to my collection. All right, so to start out recently, of course, um, if you're watching this in the future, this is filmed, I live in New Jersey and we're currently in quarantine because of the coronavirus. I, like I said before, I've been a lifelong reader. I love books. I love reading. And recently, my with my work schedule and with my personal schedule, I tended to read the most during my commute to the office. So I take two trains, or I used to take, I used to take two trains to my office in Hoboken, and then I would take two trains back. So it's like an hour each way. So about two hours a day, I was commuting, and that's when I would do a lot of my reading. Now that that commute in my schedule is gone, I actually have not been reading as much. I'm currently in the middle of reading quite a few books, as you will see, but with what's been happening recently, um, I have not really been reaching for books. If anything, I dove headfirst into Animal Crossing. <laughs> So I've been playing that a lot more. I've been trying to focus more on like YouTube and like on Instagram and I kind of strayed away from books. Uh, I'm trying to move back into a routine where books are part of my daily schedule again because I miss them and this past week I had a really rough mental health week and I think finding the time to focus on reading at least a little bit in the morning or a little bit right before bed, I think that would help me. It would help me bring back kind of my old schedule. And for me, that is self-care. Books have always been a part of my life. I love them. And I'm going to be bringing them back into my routine. That being said, I have a stack of books right here. <laughs> Most of them, well, okay, so I'd say half of them are new. A couple of them are things that I'm going back to reread because I feel like they would do me very well uh, in this time that we're living in. So let's go through what I'm reading right now first, and then we'll go into some recommendations. So the first book I have was actually uh, lent to me by a friend of mine, and this is A Gentleman in Moscow by Amar, Amor, I'm gonna butcher this, Amor Towels. This has been a bestseller for a long time. I've had this on my list to get to for a long time and just never got to it until my friend actually lent me the book. Um, this is very uh, applicable. It's literally the story of a man in a basically house arrest in Moscow in like the 1920s. So if you are trying to find something, I've got some other books here that are, that are more like distractions kind of from our current situation so th this is not that this is not i'm only like a couple of chapters in as you can see i actually used a bookmark for this one i'm only a couple of chapters in but uh so far i love the way that the story is set up i really like the setting and i'm excited to keep reading this one and this is of course fiction um i've got a good mixture here fiction and non-fiction so there should be a little bit of something for everyone for what you're looking for right now so this is what i'm reading right now and the rest of these books, a couple of these I'm like in the middle of. Let me talk about the next one I was kind of reading before I actually switched to A Gentleman in Moscow. And that is this book right here. So this is called The Theater of War, What Ancient Greek Tragedies Can Teach Us Today. And it's by Brian Dorries, D-O-E-R-R-I-E-S. 
but as someone who loves tragedies, loves Greek tragedies, loves Shakespearean tragedies, I just love tragic works. And this spoke to me, especially as someone who was a military brat. Specifically, he is writing um, about specifically bringing these ancient tragic, tragic plays to a modern audience that specifically being like the American military fascinating stuff so I, I got like halfway through this book but um this was like I was reading this right when the coronavirus started getting kind of big so I've I've I really wanted to move away from nonfiction because this is a nonfiction account I wanted to jump into a fiction title so that's when I started um, A Gentleman in Moscow so I'm halfway through this one I want to jump back in and finish it up but this is something I really wanted to take my time with I didn't want to rush through this book because I just saw so much of myself in it it's beautifully written. I I just adore this book. So if you like any kind of tragic plays or anything, or if you have a military background, I would really recommend this book. This is really good. This next book I started reading and then again, it's a book where I didn't want to rush through it. I need to really sit down and like be focused. It's not something you can lose yourself in. It's another nonfiction title. And this is called Why Buddhism is True by Robert Wright. The Science and Philosophy of Meditation and Enlightenment, which also applicable. <laughs> I've been trying to read more about meditation and mindfulness, especially nowadays. That's a very helpful. Um, but again, this is a very, I would say, dense read. Like, you really need to, this isn't something you can, like, read and lose yourself in for fun. This is something where you're almost, like, studying the material. That being said, it's fascinating, and they actually give you, like, some exercises, too, that you can do along with it. Uh, I don't know. I just, I find this fascinating. And like I said, I stopped reading this because I've, I wasn't in the right mindset to devote the time needed to it. But this book has been recommended to me by so many people, including one of my old managers, and I'm glad I finally got around to it. Don't know if I'm going to be reading this immediately. I think uh, in the order of which I want to read these books, it's probably going to be Gentleman of Moscow, I want to finish The Theater of War, and then I might jump into another fiction title. I like to switch between fiction, nonfiction, fiction, nonfiction as I read. So it might be a while before I jump back in, but this has been recommended to me for so many times. This is a New York Times bestseller, but then again, a lot of things are a New York Times bestseller, but it, it's a good book. I got... I got pretty far in. I got like 70 pages in. So for me, that's not a lot, but I know for some people that could be a bit. Um, I find it fascinating. Uh, this might actually be better as a um, an audiobook. If you are someone who can listen to audiobooks, I think this would be a really good audiobook. Okay, so the next new book I have here, I've got two new books here that I haven't actually started yet. One was a hand-me-down gift from my grandmother, and this is called The Gown. This is by Jennifer Robson, and it's the novel of the royal wedding. So I, I'm thinking it is a um, a book that basically talks about the uh, Elizabeth I's wedding. <laughs> no, Elizabeth II. Oh, I'm so bad. I watched The Crown. I swear to God, I did. But uh, I'm behind on this. Yeah. Okay. So it's supposed it's set up as like realistic fiction, but it is fiction. Um. So I think it's supposed to be about like the people who made the dress for uh, Queen Elizabeth's wedding and then how it kind of jumps into like modern day with like their descendants. I don't know. It's not an interesting. My grandma liked it and so she handed me the book and now I've got it here. I haven't jumped into it yet but we shall see. I did like the crown. <laughs> I don't really read too much about the royal family but my grandmother is obsessed with like anything BBC or the royal family or anything so she's into that and sometimes she'll hand me books like this so uh don't really know what I've, as you can see I really don't know much about it at all but that's on my list of what I'm going to be reading upcoming and the next book one that I was actually waiting to get for a while this is called Voracious and this is by Cara Nicoletti and this is a hungry reader cooks her way through through great books. So if you've seen the YouTube channel Binging with Babish, where he makes recipes from like movies, TV shows, she's basically doing the same thing in book form through famous books. So she like reads books, talks about them, and then she includes recipes like throughout the book, uh, like with um, recipe from Anne with Green Ga Anne of Green Gables or uh, Les Miserables. It's a re bread recipe because of course it is. Um, Pride and Prejudice, uh, Bride Shed Revisited. Uh, so yeah, a few kind of things like that. I, I'm not in a place right now where I'm going to be able to make any of the recipes as I read this, 
but I love books like this where they mix together um like memoir slash editorial analysis and recipes I just find it really interesting I think it's more interesting than just a regular old cookbook but uh I've had this on my list for a while I picked it up on Amazon like over a month ago like before this lockdown started I ordered a few of these books online um but yeah I'm excited to read this though it's probably gonna make me hungry on, we'll see okay so that's everything that's new in my collection let me tell you about a couple of books I pulled out that I wanted to go back and reread because I could use a nice little boost these are all um fiction and they're just like feel good kind of story except for maybe this one so the devil wears prada i love this book if you've only read if you've only seen the movie it's so different the book and the movie and this is one of the only times where the book and the movie are so different but i love both of them for different reasons like i think the movie is a very hollywoodized version of the story but it's still a good story the book is totally different and i still i love the book too. So if you've only seen the movie, pick up the book. You're gonna need to have a nice sarcastic sense of humor and a potty mouth to really like the book. Just saying. <laughs> um, I, I love this and I've, I've reread this so many times. I think I got, uh, this is a different copy, but I did get a copy of this in high school and I read it for the first time in high school right after I saw the movie and I was like, oh, this is different, but I like it. <laughs> so I think that copy got old and fell apart. So this is a newer version of the book, but I love this. Ignore the sequels. <laughs> The sequels to this book are trash, but the original book is really good. So just just read this one. Ignore the rest. So I've gone back and I reread this a few times and I could use, I feel like it's a good story for right now. So I'm going to be rereading that at some point soon. These next two are manga. So they're Japanese comics so you can buy in English. Uh, the first one is this cute story. It's just called Wotakoi. Um, it's, that's not the full title. It's like Wotakoi ni Aiwa Muzukashi. Uh, Love is hard for otaku. Otaku is basically, uh, I mean, trying to translate it, kind of a nerd. So it's the story of these two, like, really nerdy people who, uh, like, suck at dating. And they've been friends their whole life and they end up dating each other. It's actually really cute. The anime has one season and I think that's it. I don't think they're having another season of it. So I really wanted to start reading the manga. This is the first big english volume and it includes volumes one and two of the japanese edition so you read it like you would the japanese version but this is all translated uh, i only have this volume so i really do need to get the next i think the next two in english are out um which would be the next four of the japanese but uh, i just i love the story i think it's really cute it reminds me of me and my boyfriend we watched it together and my battery is about to die Okay, so my other recommendation for just really cute shit, if you need something adorable that's not that deep, uh, this is Cheese Sweet Home. It's literally like the story of this obnoxious but adorable but also really crazy little kitten just getting into mischief. It's very wholesome. It's adorable. Uh, the, there's a lot of the manga. There's four of these out that I have right now. This is volume one. There's a lot of it. There's actually an anime. So there's a show if you just want to watch the adorable show. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be a kid's show, but whatever. It's the cutest shit I've ever seen. Watch the original 2D animated one. The, the 3D animated one that came out in like 2016 is the stuff nightmares are made of. Please don't watch that one. Watch the original one. I'll link it like on Crunchyroll or something. It's just cute. It's wholesome. It it takes your mind away. It's literally just the adventures of this adorable little family in Japan and this this cat they adopted. And the cat makes the cutest facial expressions ever. Just adorableness. <laughs> so if you need a hefty dose, like just a good shot of cute and awe, like this is which is what I needed. This is why I pulled this back out. So I'm probably going to reread this. I might watch the show um, just because I could use some adorable cuteness right now. All right, so that's everything in my either currently reading or to be read pile. Let's jump to the last two books I read recently that were really good and that I really recommend. They're nice, big, thick fiction books if you really want to lose yourself in a book. The first one is by Murakami Haruki and this is Killing Commentadore. This I would really only recommend if you like mysteries that may or may not always be solved um, and if you like opera. If you like both of those, this is your boy. It's He's thick. It's a, it's a long book. It took me a while to read it, but it's it's really good. It's, of course, Murakami Haruki, if you've read any of his other books, he, you know he has a style, so it definitely 
his style. I've noticed that a few of his works are quite over-sexualized. This one isn't, so if you're worried about that, this really isn't hyper-sexualized. Um, and I just really liked it. Uh, I would highly recommend listening to the opera Don Giovanni as you read this because it's like referenced every other page, I swear to god. And I did find a recording of the whole opera on YouTube. So I was listening to that while I was reading this. It just transported me. It was excellent. Uh, great book. Um, I kind of wish I had gotten the paperback book, but I bought this like right when it got translated. It took me a while to read it. I think I had this for a year before I finally read it, but uh, it's a big boy. And the other book that I really lost myself into and I thought I wasn't really expecting too much from it, but it just blew me out of the water. I was so surprised. And this is actually, it kind of matches my eye look today. This is City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert. She is most famous for writing, what is it, Eat, Pray, Love, right? I never read that, but um, she wrote also The Signature of All Things, which is one of my other, like, top tier favorite books. These two. Um, so this book... It's a coming-of-age story for a young woman in, like, 1920s New York City. Uh, but it, it takes twists and it turns and you really don't expect it. But it's so good. Uh, if you, if you want to read a book that's full of glitz and glam but life, and if you're really missing, like, people and cities, it might make you feel a little homesick if you're, like, missing out on being in a city, especially New York. But this was such a good book. Uh, this was recommended to me. Um, by a couple of people. A good friend of mine read this and as soon as I finished she was like, so what did you think about it? Did you like it? And like we talked about it for forever. This is a really good book and this is one that it will pull you into the story and you will get lost and it's pretty thick. It's nice. It'll take you a couple of days at least to read it. Uh, it was so good. Okay, so that's everything that's new to my collection or recent or that I'm currently rereading. Um, I'm gonna go ahead. We'll jump. I'll just do a quick I don't know, pans over the bookshelves behind me so you can see what's there. Again, I'm not going to be pulling out each book like I did in my previous video because they're basically the same back here. Okay, so that's just a quick overview of my whole book collection as long along with what I'm currently reading and what I would recommend for this time. A nice mix fiction, non-fiction. Uh, I think it's, it's got a little bit of something for everyone here. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this, please let me know down below and let me know if you are reading anything right now, what you're reading. Thank you guys for watching and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.